Happy New Year, everyone. Anna Morales here, and welcome to my very first video of 2024. And if you saw my monthly schedule and my community posts, you know that I come up with some Pixar Cars ideas and two Thomas videos. For today's video, we'll be looking at my top five favorite Pixar Cars characters. Now for the list. I'll only include those that appeared in the movies. Well, with the Cars on the Road, it is connected to the first three movies, but I'll mostly pick those from the first three Cars movies because those are the ones that we're used to. But without further delay, let's start driving and stopping on each part of the list. Number five, Finn McMissile. Finn McMissile is a British spy character in the second Cars movie who was fake mistakes made her for the American spy and recruits him in the mission to solve the problems in the World Grand Prix. And Finn McMissile is one of the spy cars along with Rotor Core Redline and Holly Schiffwell. And Finn McMissile is elegant, nice, and kind. He can also be daring, extremely brave, smart, and eloquent, which you think can be almost mandatory for a spy. He knows every trick in the book you can think of and is always prepared for any kind of situation that comes. Finn has a lot of repertory and gadgets, including a spy camera, oil blasters, a submarine mode, propellers, and a wheeled motor jack, just to name a few. As for Finn's voice, I thought Michael Caine did a nice and, and good impression for a spy car. But the reason why I put Finn McMissile as number five is because he only appeared in the second Cars movie, and that's it. And he never returned after that. And it's most likely due to the failure of Cars 2 could be the reason why. Same thing with Holly Shift, well. But overall, Finn McMissile is a marvelous spy, and one of the best Cars characters out there despite only appearing once. Now then, let's move on. Number four. Luigi and Guido. What I like about Luigi and Guido is that they're basically the car's equivalent of Donald and Douglas when it comes to the two of them working together and them arguing. Let's first talk about Luigi. He is the owner of Luigi's Casa della Tires. And after meeting Lightning, Luigi is one of the members of Lightning's pit crew where he helps Lightning change his tires. And Luigi has a personality that is kind-hearted and a flamboyant personality. And he wishes to sell his tires and will get upset when no one buys a tire or wants them for free. You may also see Luigi making a cameo in Finding Nima during a credit scene. Luigi also has a very smart knowledge of tires and knows what type of tires the customers truly need when Lightning had a set of white wall tires, knowing that they would look good on him. As for Luigi's voice, I thought Tony Shalou did an excellent job voicing him. It suits the Italian accent like Mario. Now then, let's talk about Guido. He speaks with an Italian accent, and Luigi is the only one who can understand him due to both of them coming from Italy. And like Luigi, Guida also has a dream of changing a race car's tires. And later on, he becomes a member of Lightning's pit crew because of his ability to change the tires at a fast pace, which leaves the others to be surprised. And although Guida usually speaks Italian because he came from Italy once again, he can speak several English words like pit stop, where he says pit stop. Okay, modify, and boss. Those are the English words he can say. In addition, 
I like how Guido was the main character in the car short, Spinny, where he was shaking the sign for Luigi so that way the customers will come to the store. And then, while he was shaking it, he noticed that he could perform tricks for the sign, which starts to attract the town folk of Reedy to Springs and its customers. And with the final trick Guido made, he throws the spinning sign up in the air and catches it while balancing on a set of tires. And while Guido did go back to shaking the sign like usual again, he spins it again one more time before it ended. And in terms of Guido's voice, I thought Guido Quarini did a nice job voicing Guido because Guido Quarini shared the same name as the character itself, which is quite shocking if you ask me. And it suited the Italian accent perfectly. And imagine if Luigi and Guido were like Mario and Luigi. Now that would be awesome if you ask me. To sum it up, Luigi and Guido make a great duo. We'll see how many more appearances I used to will make. Sorry about that. That was just my Italian impression voice. Number three, Doc Hudson, a.k.a. the Fabulous Hudson Hornet. Doc Hudson was once one of the most famous race cards in whole history. He won three Piston Cups in a row and he still held the record for most wins in a single season. But he told Lightning with the cups, he said all he saw were a bunch of empty cups. And it all changed the reason why. It was because he was involved in a terrible crash during 1954 on the championship race, which put him out of the season. And the people, or cars in this case, told Doc that he was history. And he never got a chance to see what was left inside of him. In the end of the movie, Doc became Lightning's trainer, as well as a friend to McQueen in Radiator Springs, and the town was back on the map. And Doc learned some lessons like Lightning, friendship, promises, how greed can affect others, and that you can keep secrets forever. And Doc didn't return in the second Cars movie due to the Paul Newman's death in 2008. And in the third Cars movie, Pixar used unused recordings of the lines they didn't use in the first Cars movie. And that's quite clever if you ask me, because they didn't need to hire somebody else and just use the same voice clips that they use from Paul Newman, so that way Doc wouldn't sound any different in the flashbacks. And speaking of Paul Newman, I thought it suited the character perfectly, because since he's an old car, it sounds really wise and well-fitted with his character. And may Paul Newman rest in peace. And all in all, Doc is a great character. Even though it's disappointing he didn't return in any of the other movies, as well as any other shorts of the Cars franchise. But I'm glad he made a good appearance and made the most of it. And once again, may Paul Newman rest in peace. Number two, Chick Hicks. Out of all the racing bad guys in the Cars franchise, I think Chick Hicks has got to be best out of all of them because he's a great cheater when knocking all the cars out, which leads to the epic crash at the beginning of the movie, as well as the King's Crash in Los Angeles. And he sets the example of what Lightning could have been if he didn't learn about the importance of friendship and about the arrogance. And like the rest of his pit crew team, Chick is extremely rude, arrogant, and self-centered, and especially loves winning, like lightning. And he doesn't serve that much of a role in the third Cars movie, but I think it's a decent way for him to move on, even though Jackson Storm took the light instead. As for Chick's voice, I thought Michael Keaton and Bob Peterson did a great job. But if I had to pick one or the other, I'd do Michael Keaton because Michael Keaton made Chick sound more rude 
because that's how I always pictured Chick to be and make a great cheater to make himself win stuff. But Bob Peterson did a nice job too. All in all, Chick is a great antagonist, and I think he's the best antagonist out of all of them, with Professor Z coming out a close second from the second Cars movie. Let's hope he will make some more appearances and some good antagonistic roles in the future. Before I get to my number one pick, here are a bunch of honorable mentions. The King, aka Strip Weathers. I think he's an interesting Dynaco racer, and one of the best racers in the previous Piston Cup races, but he got beat out by Doc Hudson because I find Doc more interesting, and he had more character in the movie. Fillmore. As much as I like Fillmore, especially since in the first Cars movie he was voiced by George Carlin, the guy who also narrated Thomas and Friends, but I decided to take him off the list because I want to have a list that's interesting and that many other Cars fans agree with. Sarge. Same reasons as with Fillmore. Jackson Storm. He got beat out by Chick Kicks because I find Chick to be a great antagonist and the best of them all, like I told you before. Professor Zundeth, or Z for short. Same reasons as with Jackson Storm. Cruz Ramirez. She would have to be my second favorite female character in the Cars franchise. And while she is a good way to help Lightning like, move on with his races, but she doesn't get that much screen time, even with her episode in Cars of the Road. So that's why she didn't make it. And my number one most favorite Cars character of all time is a tie of two between Lightning McQueen and Toe Mater. I'm sure you knew this was coming, didn't you? The reason why I put McQueen and Mater as my most favorite Cars characters is that those characters stood out the most to me. And it's the reason why I made McQueen as my avatar, and why I put both of them in my picture for my main YouTube page. Let's first talk about McQueen. At first, he was as self-centered and overconfident like Chick was, and he could feel like he could win the Piston Cup without any help from his pit crew or his crew chief. But he wasn't cheating like Chick Hicks. But however, when he arrived in Radiator Springs and fixed the road, he became more sympathetic, understanding, and selfless character during his time in Radiator Springs. And during the final race, he had a new personality when he accepted defeat in the last race. And he helped the King, or Strip Weathers, cross the finish line. And that showed that Helping others is much more important than winning, because at the end of the day, without your friends, it's an empty cup. And I like McQueen's roles in the second and third movies. While in the second movie, he didn't serve that much because Mater took the spotlight, at the very least, he served a role in the second movie than nothing at all. And I like how he, in the third movie, he helped Cruz be a great racer like the day he first started racing. Now let's talk about Mater. I like how Mater is the main character in Mater's Tall Terrace because I enjoyed those when I was little due to the action and humor. And Mater is a very selfless and loyal person, especially those closest to him. And what I like best about Mater is his silliness because People may find Mater annoying, but I just found him s silly and hilarious through and through, no matter what. As for these two characters' voices, I thought Larry the Cable Guy, who played Mater, did a fantastic, priceless job voicing the character. It sounds silly with a comedic tone in it. It's just perfect. As for McQueen's voice, I thought Keith Ferguson and Owen Wilson did an excellent job voicing him. Because you can't tell the difference. And McQueen is one of those voices that cannot be changed. 
neither can Mater's. Overall, to sum it up, Lightning McQueen and Mater are the best characters, and they act like the Thomas and Percy for me. And that's why I consider McQueen and Mater to be the absolute best Cars characters ever. Well, that was my top five favorite Cars characters. That was a long journey, but I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section which of these Cars characters are your favorite. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? And I'll continue with my monthly schedule because those are the things I plan on doing for this month in January. Stay tuned for more of those videos. This is Anna Morales saying, Happy New Year.